You're cruising up in the sky, traveling to another country for your long-awaited vacation. But emergencies can happen anywhere, anytime. Let's say the plane you're traveling in has a hole in it. As long as it's really small, it's not a big deal. Definitely not powerful enough to throw off the pressurization system. But if a window accidentally blows off, it's officially a problem. That's going to mean severe loss of pressure and it might be enough to depressurize the whole cabin. That might create enough force to suck something small out of the hole, like an unlucky carry-on. Airplane windows are round because that way, the air pressure is evenly distributed. If the windows were square, air currents would be able to find a weakness and they'd crack easier. Loss of pressure can lead to something way more serious, an in-flight fire. It's not the only reason a fire would break out on a plane. Engine trouble or a drop in fuel pressure could also do it. If it's the engine burning, the only thing a passenger can do is stay calm. A plane can fly pretty far, even with only one engine left. As ridiculous as it sounds, modern planes are actually designed to fly for a short distance without any engines at all. If there's a fire, the first thing the pilot will do is try to land as soon as possible. An actual in-cabin fire would probably look quite scary, but every plane is equipped with all the necessary gear to put it out. Flight attendants aren't just there to serve you food and drinks. Their main job is to keep you safe, so they know exactly how to handle a cabin fire. Still, there's something you can do to help them before the flight. Check over what you packed in your carry-on luggage. Back in 2007, a plane left New York Soon after takeoff, passengers noticed smoke coming out of one of the overhead lockers. The fire started because of a short circuit in a lithium battery. The crew took care of the fire in a few quick minutes, but they decided to land anyway, just to be extra safe. Batteries aren't the only things that can catch fire. A similar story happened with a passenger's air purifier. Even the seats and carpet could catch fire, depending on what gets spilled on them. That's why there are a lot of things you can't take on board. Big bottles of liquid, your magic eight ball, snow globes, gel candles, even gel insoles sometimes. Now what about dry ice? Feel like making some homemade ice cream at 35,000 feet? Think again, it's way too dangerous. Dry ice is flammable, so you can't just pack it in a lunchbox and take it with you. You can bring around five pounds of dry ice with you but you'll need special clearance from the airline. Some airlines don't allow pilots to have beards. Facial hair can get in the way of their oxygen mask fitting on properly, so it's mainly a safety thing. Passenger oxygen masks swing down because of a change in air pressure. The air inside the cabin is pressurized, so you can breathe normally. If something occurs that changes the pressure suddenly, a few things happen. First, the masks come down. Their nickname is the rubber jungle. Second, the pilot descends quickly and safely to a lower altitude. Third, the pilot gives out the all clear, letting you know it's safe to take your mask off. The masks only have enough oxygen for a few minutes. It's enough for the pilot to descend to a more breathable altitude, so you're not gonna be wearing it for the whole rest of the flight. The white traces planes leave behind in the sky are condensed carbon dioxide and water. This liquid is released when fuel is burned. It's basically a slightly polluted hot water vapor, kind of like breathing in cold wintry air. Way up there in the sky, it's always frosty cold, no matter what season it is. Lightning isn't as dangerous for planes as you might think. If a lightning bolt hits a plane, the passengers won't get shocked or anything. The entire aircraft is covered with aluminum coating that conducts electric current and doesn't let it inside. This protection device is tested using a lightning simulator. During night flights, the lights turn off for two reasons. One is to be able to fall asleep, but the other is to get everyone used to the dark in case of evacuation. You might be asked to raise your window shade so the flight attendants can see what's happening out there and choose the best side for evacuation. It's pretty common to feel more emotional on a plane. You might cry watching a soap opera or laugh at a silly comedy. Our body experiences stress and takes everything way too seriously because of low oxygen levels. 
You're sitting in a closed space at a high altitude, very far from home. Your subconscious might feel unsafe, and so it reacts by dialing up your emotions. Don't be surprised if you start having weird cravings up there, too. You might have bought a huge chocolate bar before you boarded, but then, once you're in the sky, suddenly you start craving fried chicken. Good thing they usually serve chicken. Or fish. Anyway, up in the sky or down on the ground, cravings are usually a sign that you're thirsty. Just go get some water. Many passengers get a headache during their flight, especially right after takeoff. Don't worry, it's normal. You're climbing to an altitude higher than Mount Everest in about 10 minutes. The air up there is extremely thin, which means less oxygen's going to your brain. Want to feel better? Chew on some gum or soft candy. Another thing you might notice on a flight is dryness. Your hands and face might feel a bit dry, and that's okay. It's all that dry air you're sitting in. Air in the cabin is filtered thoroughly, which gives it that special airplane air feel. Stay hydrated and bring a good moisturizer with you on board. You might also feel like you're coming down with a cold. Your nose might get congested. Your throat might start to tickle. (coughs) Well, you know the drill. Just remember that everyone else is feeling it too. No need to worry. It's that dry air again. It dries out your nose and throat, making you feel as if you have a cold coming on. You'll feel much better once you land and get off the plane. The lower the air pressure, the more gases expand. This law also works inside your stomach and intestines. Ah yes, planes can give you a serious case of gas. The great news? Every plane has toilets. But if you do have to make a run to the toilet, don't assume that nobody can bother you in there. The toilet door can still be opened from the outside. The airline crew have to be able to get in there if you need help, even if it's a bit embarrassing. Your night vision might also feel like it's a bit off. Your eyes need fresh and moist air to function properly. Your corneas are the one part of your body that don't have their own blood supply. They get their oxygen straight from the air. Dry, low-oxygen airplane air isn't great for your eyes. Throw some eye drops in your bag along with that gum. Reduced vision is also why the crew dims the lights and asks you to open your window shades during nighttime takeoffs and landings. Your eyes need to be adjusted to the dimness and the dry air in case of an emergency. So, the plane's taken off and everything's going smoothly. Now what? You have to sit in one place for hours, hardly moving at all. But your body feels tired, like it's been on a long run. Again, it's that lack of oxygen. Your legs might even go numb. Try to get up and move around the cabin as often as you can. You need to get your blood pumping. If you can't walk around, try to stretch and massage your legs right there in your seat. Some people say squeezing and releasing your fingers and toes helps the blood flow better. Compression socks help a lot too, at least for me. Ah yes, everyone loves a holiday, but figuring out what to pack in your luggage can be a daunting task, especially when you're limited on weight and baggage space. Not to mention you're likely to do some holiday shopping on your adventure away from home. So, you're going to need extra space on your return for all those souvenirs you've collected. Accumulating too much weight or bulk can end up costing you a handsome fee with the airline if you're not properly prepared. But you can now relax. You just focus on booking your vacation. We'll take care of your luggage with these handy traveling tips. No doubt your clothes are going to take up the bulk of your luggage. Considering most airline standards permit one bag for most local trips and up to two bags for longer distances, that doesn't grant you a whole lot of space if you plan on being fashionable on your getaway, especially in the winter. However, this doesn't mean you have to turn your undergarments inside out for repeated use. The key here is to be clever with how you pack. Firstly, you might want to consider how you're folding your clothes. The most space-efficient method to store your wardrobe in a suitcase for travel is to roll up each item. Think of your clothes like those sleeping bags you used to take on your camping trips. They always seem too thick for their compacted covers, but with perseverance, you could roll it up tight enough to fit inside. Now, you don't need to wrestle with your clothes quite as much, but the same principle here applies. Start by folding your shirts, pants, and whatever else you plan on packing neatly, similar to how you might find them on a clothing store shelf. 
Then, when you have them in a relatively rectangular or squared off shape, roll them up tightly. Now that you have your little clothes logs, start packing them into your bag. And behold, extra space! Now, here's something we've all experienced arriving at our holiday destination. We drop our suitcase on the hotel bed, open it up, only to find all our clothes unfurled and scattered like a tornado stormed through our bag. Your luggage has had a rough journey from your home to your holiday destination. It's been dragged through airport terminals, tossed around by baggage handlers, and rocked back and forth during in-flight turbulence. A simple stationary item, rubber bands, will help you keep your clothes neat. Now that you've got them rolled up, place a couple of rubber bands around them to keep them from unfurling. This is an especially neat trick if you want to roll an outfit together as one. Maybe you've got head-to-toe denim that you can't wait to rock on your getaway. Fold up your clothes as before, then layer the different items of your ideal outfit atop each other. Roll them up as one, then use the rubber bands to keep them together. You can preemptively decide your day-to-day outfits before you even board the plane. However, you may still prefer to fold your clothes, especially business or formal shirts and pants. Lucky for you, we have a handy trick for that, too. Instead of folding each item individually, we're going to lay it out all on top of each other. Start with your shirts and tops, alternating with one on top and one on the bottom, keeping the necks of your shirts at the center. Work your way down to your pants and smaller items until they're all laid out flat. Try to keep your pants in the middle. Finally, start folding your items in on themselves, with the shirts creating the outer layer until you end up with a neat bundle, like a present. You should be able to sit your bundle squarely into your bag. Want to save even more luggage space? Instead of putting your undergarments and socks into their own section, try fitting them into available spaces and gaps within the rest of your luggage. If you plan on taking a cap with you, for instance, the inside of your headwear is a great space to store your socks. This applies to other small luggage items too, such as phone chargers and ties. Though keep in mind that you can also lay your ties and belts out flat across the clothes in your luggage to conserve space. And if you're really limited on baggage size, say all you have is a carry-on for a fortnight long trip, here's another method. Get yourself some compression bags to store your clothes in. These bags will compact multiple sets of clothes into the size of a small laptop bag. Fold up the clothes you intend to pack and store them into the compression bag. You should be able to fit 8 to 10 standard clothes items or a few bulky ones. Once you've filled the bag, seal it and squeeze the air out through the built-in one-way pressure valve. The easiest way to do this is either by rolling it, and you should be pretty good at rolling your clothes by now, or by using your knees to apply pressure. You should be able to fit two to four of these compression bags in your standard carry-on suitcase, which is especially helpful if you want to save money by avoiding checked-in luggage. And you can take even more clothes on board with you if you stick them into a pillowcase. The best thing about this tip is that it also doubles as a comfy pillow for you to rest your head on during the flight. If you do have a bit more space to spare, another great way to keep your stuff organized is with packing cubes. It might not be as space efficient as compression bags, but a lot of travelers prefer them for tidier and well-organized packing. You might like to divide them by outfits or clothes types, such as one for pants and one for tops. You can easily purchase packing cubes from most online retail services and travel and camping stores. There are also packing cubes specially designed for one or more pairs of shoes. This is a great way to compact the space your shoes would otherwise take up in your luggage and to keep your clean clothes from coming into contact with your footwear. Nobody wants their tops to smell like feet, right? If you're still struggling to bring all your items with you inside your suitcase, there are a couple more tricks that you can use for that extra bit of weight without the extra cost. The most obvious of which is to use your own body. (laughs) That's right, time to layer up. Pick out all your bulky items and wear as many as you can manage. You can try wearing some shorts under your pants or several layers of your winter wear, such as your sweater, jacket, and coat all over the top of one another. You might be sweating a little, but most airports and planes are well air-conditioned. You can always shed some layers once you've boarded your flight. At least you'll have some warm wear to snuggle up in if you do get cold up there in the clouds. 
If you don't want to wear all those layers, there's actually another type of bag you can carry on the plane with you, free of charge. Get yourself a duty-free bag from any of the duty-free stores in the airport. You can even hang on to it for next time. Store all your extra items in your duty-free bag and carry it onto your flight at no additional cost. It's also worth considering what type of luggage you're using. More importantly, how much it weighs. A lot of people forget that the standard 15 pounds permitted by most airlines includes the actual weight of their suitcase. The bag itself can often weigh up to 4 to 6 pounds. That's a huge chunk of your weight in the bag alone. So, when you're shopping for your luggage, take into account how much it weighs. Choosing a lighter bag will give you more space for the items you want to take with you. Stick to some of these handy tips and you'll be on your way with no shortage of luggage and some extra money to spend on your vacation. Happy flying! Now, flying has long become routine for many people. But even frequent flyers sometimes don't know about things you should never do on a plane. Ooh. No bare feet on a plane. It's one of the biggest no-nos of air travel. Even if we omit the topic of unpleasant odors, you, the airplane floor is extremely filthy. People with contagious foot problems might have been walking the aisles barefoot before you. There's likely to be a lot of dirt left after previous passengers. And don't even get me started on the floor in the laboratories. Ew. If your feet need some freedom, take off your shoes, but at least wear your socks. Or bring along a pair of light slippers. Keep in mind that the pressurized air in the passenger cabin is just as dry as it is in the Sahara Desert, with only about 20% humidity. That's why your skin may feel discomfort after a flight. Mm. But wouldn't it make more sense to install several humidifiers that could add some moisture? But this extra load would cost airlines lots of money. Plus, the plane's airframe is mostly made of aluminum and other metals, and humid air could lead to corrosion. So, don't forget to bring a moisturizer and use it during the flight. Always secure your tray table as soon as the plane starts moving on the tarmac, and never lower it during the takeoff and landing. It's a security measure, which ensures that you and the other passengers will have a clear pathway in case of an emergency evacuation. Also, keep your seat in an upright position during takeoff and landing. First of all, a reclined seat can seriously slow down an emergency evacuation, since it will block a person sitting behind. What's more, the more backward you're leaning, the harder it is to get into the brace position during an emergency landing. Now, try to avoid snoozing during or right after takeoff and landing. For one thing, it's not the best thing for your health. The main problem is that the air pressure inside the cabin changes very quickly during these phases of the flight. This, in turn, affects the air pressure in your ears. It's important to be alert during this time to relax and open up your ears, for example, by yawning or swallowing frequency. Chewing gum works for me. If you're sleeping, you can't do this, which can lead to permanent damage. And of course, there's a safety issue. Most accidents happen during takeoff and landing. If you're sleeping during these stages, you might not be alert and conscious enough if an emergency happens. Now, this next recommendation comes from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. According to them, you might want to skip on hot drinks on a plane. The water used to make tea or coffee doesn't come from bottles. It's regular tap water. And water tanks on airplanes are often old and full of bacteria. In 2004, there was a study which found that more than 12% of water samples contained harmful bacteria. But if you still decide to have a cup of hot beverage on a plane, never pour coffee or tea on your own. Flight attendants are trained to handle this task in crowded aisles of a moving airplane and won't accidentally burn you or other passengers. Now, it's probably better if you don't order Coke on a plane. The cabin pressure so low up in the air causes a lot of foam. For apparent reasons, flight attendants don't want to serve you a cup filled with froth. That's why they'll fill only half the cup, then wait for the bubbles to settle, and then finish pouring. That can take ages. Keep your air vent open. This way, you'll minimize the spread of germs. Planes have high-quality air filters. They'll catch up to 99% of all airborne germs, so you should be safe there. But make sure to wipe that tray table with eight times more bacteria than the toilet flush button. It's the dirtiest place on board. Another thing you should avoid is leaning your head on the window if you have a window seat. You never know who occupied your seat before you. And in any case, 
the glass is likely to be covered with germs. Say no to backless sandals and high heels on a flight. I do. There are very serious safety reasons for such a request. The first is that both these types of footwear make it very difficult to evacuate the aircraft fast. If you wear high heels, you will anyway have to leave them behind in case the crew is using emergency slides during an evacuation. The heels are very likely to damage the slide, so off they go. Now ask yourself, do you really fancy running away from the airplane barefoot? I'll answer that for you, nope. Instead, wear sturdy shoes with a solid sole. In this case, you won't find yourself standing on the hot tarmac or in the weeds without any footwear at all. Don't stuff heavy objects into overhead compartments. Your things may not stay inside during severe turbulence. And while falling out, they will injure you and other passengers. Ow! That's why if it feels difficult to lift something into the overhead compartment, better put it under the seat in front of you or elsewhere. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.